This video is going to be a unique one. I'll be summarizing the plot of Memento chronologically. And since this video is much longer than my usual videos, I've decided to make this part one, the chronological summary, where I lay out the entire plot of the movie with a linear timeline. The next video in this series will be part two, the analysis, where we'll talk about the structure, symbols, themes, and characters as usual. I just feel like this summary video is mandatory before the analysis because this movie is so incredibly disjointed structurally. All I'll say right now is the first half is in black and white, and the second half is in color, but we'll go more in depth about the structure in part two. So let's begin this summary. Welcome to Classic Explained episode 15, Memento, part one, chronological summary. And if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up and a comment, it helps so much. And if you want to see more of these, please make sure to subscribe as well. Let's get started. Leonard wakes up in a motel room and doesn't know which hotel he's at, how he got there, or how long he's been there. We see Leonard taking notes to recollect where he is or why he's there. And then we see him on the phone with an unknown speaker, and we can't hear the speaker's voice. But through Leonard, we can tell the speaker claims they've spoken to Leonard before. Leonard tells the speaker he has a short-term memory loss issue because of a certain incident. Every few minutes, he forgets the previous moment permanently. However, he remembers everything prior to this big incident. From his tattoos, we can see that he has lost his memory, and the incident is a tragic situation where someone raped and murdered his wife. Now he collects clues and reminds himself of these clues using his notes and tattoos to figure out who killed his wife, and the end goal is for him to get revenge and kill this murderer and rapist. Next, Leonard is talking to the person on the phone about a man he remembered named Sammy Jenkins. Sammy was in a car accident and ended up with basically the same brain damage as Leonard. At the time, Leonard hadn't had his brain injury yet, so his memory was perfect, and he was the insurance claims investigator for Sammy's car accident. Sammy is only covered by the insurance if his problem is physical, not psychological, and Leonard's goal is to disprove this so Sammy won't be covered and Leonard's company can save a lot of money. He also believed, from Sammy's expression, that Sammy was lying about his condition. So after running a few tests, Leonard proves Sammy's issue is psychological, not physical. Sammy's wife had to pay the endless bills, and Leonard was able to save his company a lot of money and further his career. But this conclusion that Sammy's issue was not physical made it theoretically possible that Sammy can regain his memory and snap out of this condition. So, Sammy's wife tries multiple strategies for Sammy to regain his memory, but nothing works. She even goes back to Leonard to get his personal non-business related opinion on if Sammy can snap out of it. Leonard says yes, but of course Leonard doesn't fully believe this, he's just trying to protect his company and ultimately himself. So Sammy's wife's final test for Sammy is to ask Sammy to give her her shot to treat her diabetes every few moments. Of course, consecutive shots would kill Mrs. Jenkins, but she believes that putting her life on the line would allow Sammy to realize he's giving her too many shots and snap out of this forgetful state of mind. However, Sammy keeps injecting her and Mrs. Jenkins passes away and Sammy ends up helpless in a care home. And that's the whole flashback story of Sammy. And I told the whole story of Sammy all together because it will be really important soon in the summary and the analysis in part two. So Leonard continues speaking on the phone with this unknown person, and this person gives him insight on the killer of his wife. Leonard has various reports and files with pages missing and words crossed out, and he's working with the speaker on the other side of the phone to put these answers together. All we know at this point is the killer has the first name and last initial, John G, or Jimmy G. Another thing we learn is that Leonard and the speaker figure out that this killer, John or Jimmy G, was a drug dealer. But suddenly, Leonard pulls the paperback from a new tattoo, and it reads, Never answer the phone. And I assume he's tattooed this on his leg because he was previously manipulated through the phone at some point recently. In person, Leonard can better read people's intentions by reading their facial expressions and body language. So it's easier for him to be deceived and manipulated through the phone. So Leonard, after seeing this tattoo, says, who is this? And the person immediately hangs up. Bert from the lobby knocks on the door. Leonard answers and Bert says, a cop from downstairs wants to talk to you. Leonard tells him no 
and Bert leaves. But very soon, an envelope is slipped under Leonard's door. Leonard opens it, and in it is a picture of him pointing to his chest. And we'll certainly discuss what this photo means in this video and in depth in part two. Leonard seems to vaguely recognize the significance of the photo, so he answers when the phone rings again. He asks the person who they are and what they want, and he's super paranoid. The person claims they are a cop and claims that the killer is a man named Jimmy Grant. The policeman explains Jimmy Grant deals drugs out of a bar where his girlfriend works. This all adds up with Leonard's investigation, so he heads downstairs to meet the cop in the lobby. We find out that this cop is named Officer Gamel. Leonard takes a photo of Gamel to remember who he is, but Gamel tells Leonard to write his name as Teddy, and Leonard listens and writes Teddy under the picture. Gamel heads to the secluded spot with Leonard to set up and kill the wife killer, Jimmy Grant. Jimmy shows up, expecting a drug deal, and Leonard kills him. However, before Jimmy dies, we hear him say, Sammy, under his breath. Leonard is shocked by this and doesn't understand how or why he brought up Sammy Jenkins before his death. He should have no idea who Sammy is. And I'll certainly give you more insight and my thoughts on this moment later in this video and, of course, in part two. Only seconds later, Leonard forgets why he killed Jimmy and tries to find help for Jimmy. Gamma walks in and tells Leonard he's a cop and also lies to Leonard, telling him they have never met before. But even though Leonard forgets what happened, he sees the photo of Gamal, aka Teddy, and now knows Gamal is lying that Leonard has not met him. Leonard confronts Gamal because he knows Gamal must be manipulating him in some sort of way. Gamal reminds Leonard that he is the guy that helped Leonard find Jimmy to kill him because Gamal says Jimmy killed and raped Leonard's wife. He says he told Jimmy to bring the money so he and Leonard could both kill Leonard's wife's murderer, and in the process, he could make some money on the side, stealing Jimmy's drug money. Gamal tells Leonard that Leonard is actually the Sammy Jenkins person Leonard describes on the phone. Leonard's wife was raped, however, she survived the incident. But Gamal does say it's true, during this incident, Leonard was hit in the head by the rapist and lost his memory. Just like Sammy's wife in the story, it was Leonard's wife who had diabetes and was frustrated by Leonard's memory loss. And this is what caused him to unintentionally kill her the same way Sammy Jenkins killed Mrs. Jenkins in Leonard's story. The real Sammy Jenkins was actually a liar who pretended he had memory loss. And Leonard, during his job as a claims investigator, figured this out and denied him his insurance. So overall, Gamal claims that after Leonard suffered from from his brain injury, he consciously blended the memories of the real events of the real Sammy Jenkins with the real events of his own life in order for there to be a killer of his wife and for him to have a purpose to live. Revenge. False revenge. And we will most certainly dive way deeper into this idea of false revenge in part two. What we do know is, Gamal is using Leonard to kill various criminals named John and Jimmy G, so he can steal from them. He just tells Leonard that John G is still on the loose, and he gets away with it, because every time Leonard kills a John G, he forgets, and will believe that the John G that murdered his wife is still on the loose, as long as Gamal tells him. And Leonard actually plays along with this ongoing trick, because deep down, Leonard needs something to live for. He's agreeing to this never-ending quest for revenge as he is the one who is crossing out facts in these reports and removing pages. Leonard is so angry at Gamal for manipulating him, but Gamal doesn't care because Gamal knows Leonard is just going to forget everything he just told him, and they'll continue to work together. However, the big issue is we find out that Gamal is also a John G. Teddy is just a nickname he threw out for Leonard to write on the picture. Gamal's full name is John Edward Gamal. So since Leonard is so upset with Gamal, he takes note of Gamal's license plate, indicates on Gamal's photo not to trust him, and altogether gives himself enough clues for him to eventually find out that John G is John Edward Gamal, and Gamal can be the next John G for Leonard to believe is the killer of his wife and keep his purpose going. And at this midpoint in the story, which is also the end of the movie, we see fragments of Leonard's real and unreal memories of his wife, and we see one really important shot where he has a tattoo in the same spot on his chest as the photo in the envelope from before. And on his chest, it says, I've done it. 
Gamow also said earlier that Leonard had that photo taken after he killed the real John G. I guess indicating this is where I'm gonna tattoo. I've done it. I've had my revenge on the real John G. And like I said before, we will discuss this photo a lot more in part two. Next, Leonard is at a tattoo parlor, putting together the clues for him to eventually figure out that Teddy in the photo is John Edward Gamel, who he will think is the killer of his wife. Gamel shows up, but because of the photo that Leonard references, Leonard only knows him from now on as Teddy. To manipulate Leonard, Gamel no longer claims he's a cop, and he says there is a cop who has been manipulating him on the phone with envelopes being slipped under the door. Gamel is of course talking about himself, but he's pretending this is someone else so he can pretend as Teddy he's helping Leonard. Overall, he's trying to get Leonard back on his side so they can continue doing what they've always been doing, killing other John G's and taking their money. Leonard later looks at a photo of Gamel, recalling him as Teddy, and doesn't believe a thing that he is saying because that's what the photo tells him to do. Leonard pulls a coaster note out of his jacket that says, come by later, Natalie. This note was for Jimmy Grant because Leonard is wearing a suit, but since he forgot, he thinks the suit and the car he's driving is his, and he thinks the note from Natalie is for him. He heads to the address on the coaster and meets Natalie. Natalie has no idea who he is, and he has no idea why he's there. Natalie learns about his condition and uses a little trick spitting in a cup to confirm that he has this condition, and Natalie believes Leonard is in some way affiliated with her boyfriend, who is Jimmy Grant, so she invites him over to her house. Leonard tells Natalie about his pursuit of his wife's killer as he works on putting together his self-made clues once again. Natalie says her boyfriend Jimmy Grant went to meet some guy named Teddy who took a lot of money from him and never came back. She of course is talking about the situation where Gamel aka Teddy and Leonard killed Jimmy. However, she doesn't seem to know it was Leonard and Leonard doesn't even know it was Leonard. He completely forgot. An accomplice of Jimmy's named Dodd believes Natalie set Jimmy up and he is apparently planning on finding Natalie and hurting her in some way as payback. Natalie thinks she can manipulate Leonard into feeling like he should kill Dodd or threaten him to keep Dodd away from her. And she actually succeeds in doing this. So what Natalie does is insult and curse out Leonard's dead wife relentlessly until he can't help but retaliate and injure her. She immediately leaves the house and before he can remember or find a pen to write down how hurtful she has been, she comes back and says it was Dodd who injured her like this. And Leonard believes Natalie because he forgot that he just did that to her. He insists that he go confront Dodd and hurt and threaten him in order to keep him away from his so-called friend, Natalie. When Leonard gets in his car, he surprisingly sees Gamel waiting there. Leonard thinks Gamel could be Dodd and almost kills him, but Gamel reminds Leonard he's Teddy and proves he is a friend by bringing up Sammy Jenkins, who Leonard only talks to friends about. Gamel tells Leonard not to trust Natalie and convinces him to write it on her picture. However, he scribbles it out when Gamel leaves because he again sees that Gamel's photo says, do not believe his lies. Gamma reminds Leonard his motel is the discount inn, and this correlates with Leonard's photos, so he heads back to his room. At his room, he books an escort to pretend to be his wife, just to get a taste of reliving his life before the incident. He places his wife's belongings all around the room. He tells the escort to slam the door so he can relive waking up and finding her inside. And after reliving this moment, the escort leaves, and he heads to this secluded area to burn his wife's belongings. And this whole situation with the escort and the burn belongings belongings we will certainly discuss in part two. On another day, Dodd shows up driving behind Leonard and chasing him because he sees that Leonard has stolen Jimmy Grant's car. The chase continues and mid chase, Leonard forgets who's chasing who, but he gets away and rereads his notes that Dodd is the one he needs to punish for Natalie. Leonard suspects the man chasing him is Dodd, so he arrives at Dodd's motel room before Dodd to hide and catch him while he's vulnerable. He picks up a bottle to use as a weapon, but then he immediately forgets why he's holding the bottle. He then assumes he's in his own motel room, so he takes a shower. Dodd then shows up and the two of them get in a fight. Leonard defeats Dodd and ties him up and stuffs him into a closet. But Leonard didn't even know why he was fighting Dodd, so he looks at his notes and they say, put him onto Teddy or just get rid of him. In the next moment, Gamel shows up because Leonard called him. Gamel helps Leonard escort Dodd out using Dodd's gun and neither of them know why Leonard had Dodd stuffed in the closet. 
but I feel like Gamel actually does, but I'll get all into that in part two. Leonard previously wrote on his photo of Dodd to ask Natalie about Dodd because that's what his note also said. So Leonard heads back to Natalie's. He shows up to Natalie's door, confused and upset because he doesn't know who Dodd is and doesn't know why he hurt him. Natalie is glad that this happened, knowing she won't have to worry about Dodd anymore. Natalie comforts Leonard by saying he did the right thing. She helps him relax and get his clothes off to go to sleep, and she sees his tattoos. Then she agrees to repay him by helping him find this John G that he's looking for, and then they go to sleep. The next morning, Natalie reminds Leonard that she knows a person who can match the license plate tattooed on Leonard's leg with the driver's license of the John G he is looking for. So they set up a meeting where she can hand him this information. In the next scene, Leonard and Gamel are at a restaurant where they're having a conversation about Leonard's condition. But I'll save the discussion in this scene for part two because it has very little to do with the plot and has a lot more to do with the themes and the overarching message of the movie. Leonard meets up with Natalie and she gives him the information he needs. She also gives him a secluded address where to kill John G. Leonard heads back to his motel and puts all of his self-made clues together and figures out that Teddy, aka Gamel, aka John Edward Gamel, is the John G that he's looking for. But in reality, just another John G of the endless John G's that Leonard will kill. He writes behind Gamel's picture to remind himself Gamel needs to be killed, and he is the rapist and murderer of his wife. Gamel shows up at the lobby to meet Leonard, and Leonard takes him to the same site where Jimmy Grant was killed. And finally, Leonard kills Gamel. And this is where the story ends, but the film begins where we literally see in reverse an undeveloping photo of Teddy with a gunshot to the head. All right, that's my summary. Subscribe for weekly videos and please send me recommendations. Part two, the analysis will be here next week. So stay tuned. I hope to see you again and thank you so much for watching. See you later.